Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions. Now today I'm going to be looking at Ubiquiti Unify AI port and I'm going to be looking at this in the context of third party cameras. Today I'm going to be using a bit of a mixture, Hikvision and um, also just a Tapo like a cheap Wi-Fi camera. Um, and basically trying to get this AI port to get all the features that you expect from an AI camera onto those cameras. So just to give a bit of context, as you may know, last year Unify allowed OnVIF cameras to work with the Unify Protect system. It was a nice little feature to add, something that had been missing. Um, unfortunately, it quickly became apparent that you didn't get any features with those cameras. So you added them and they were literally like dumb cameras. So you don't get anything with them. You don't get any audio, you don't get motion detection, line crossing, any of that stuff is all gone. Just a recording camera, which was a little bit disappointing. But I think certainly myself and probably lots of other people thought that in true sort of ubiquity fashion, they would release a firmware update later that would allow you to use all those features. However, Ubiquiti have taken a slightly different approach on this. And actually what they've done instead is they've released the AI port. So the AI port is basically a little device which can make any of those cameras an AI camera. So if you think like an AI turret, AI dome, those kind of cameras, all the features you get from that, like facial recognition, number plate reading, all that is added when you use this device with the other camera. So it's kind of two devices to make one camera an AI camera. Now, they sort of show this being used with uh, some of their non-AI cameras, say for example like the G5 Bullet, but it can also be used with any OnVIF camera. So in this example, I'm going to be using Hikvision, um, also like a little cheap Tapo one. And I just want to see how well this device performs and whether it actually does what it's supposed to do and some of the implications of that, how well it all works. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at today. What I'll do first is I'll just look at the specs of the product and then we'll do a bit of an unboxing and then we'll go into the setup. If you want to skip ahead, just feel free. I'll put chapters at the bottom and we'll get into how well this device performs. Okay, so I'm on the uh, Ubiquiti store here and here we have the AI port. I'm on the UK store, so actually this device isn't available yet. I had to get mine from the EU store, but it will be coming out soon. We're always the last to get stuff, unfortunately. Um, so you can see, first of all, the price, 150 pounds or 180 plus fat, so it's pretty expensive. So um, if you already have an existing camera, then the extra 180 pounds is gonna be less than buying, say, an AI turret. But if you were buying a third party camera and then adding this, then it's probably not gonna make much sense to do it that way. So really this is gonna be for kind of retrofits where the cameras are already in place and you don't want to upgrade them. So I would say this price is a little bit high, um, especially if you're gonna do say 10 cameras, you've got 1800 quid there, that's gonna get uh, that's gonna get pretty expensive pretty quickly. So the price is a little bit disappointing, but it's pretty much in line with what I would expect, to be honest. Uh, it would have been nice if this had come out in a firmware update, but it didn't, so we're doing it this way instead. Right, and as we've already said, you get all the um, AI features that you get with uh, an AI camera, and it's compatible with OnVIF third-party cameras. Now, this is the point to note here. We've got um, a PRI++ or plus input, and basically that input's going to determine how much power you can get out from the device. So it's got an in port and then it's got an out port and that's if you're connecting directly to the camera rather than through the network. So say you put in a PU++ uh, input, you're going to get PU++ out. Um, so yeah, as it says here, you can connect directly, which I'll show you a minute in the unboxing, or you can do it on the network. There is also a rack mount for these devices as well, so you can put several of them into a rack. Um, actually, it's not listed on here, but I have seen it on, I think, the US site. So that is available as well, it will be shortly. So you can stack them all up and have them nice and neatly in the rack. Okay, so let's go on to the unboxing. Okay, so here we have the AI port. Um, so let's take a look and see what we get in the box. Okay, so here it is. It's pretty big actually. It's bigger than I was expecting. I was expecting to be a similar size to a viewport, but it's a little bit bigger. We've got the uh, PoE out here and the PoE in there and then the reset button. On the other end, we've got the SD card, which is going to be for edge recording. Um, I believe that is not actually uh, implemented yet. It's going to come in an update. And we've got a nice little Unify icon on the front here. We've got the template for the bracket here. And there's the bracket so it can be mounted. There's also a rack mount for this uh, for these if you're going to use lots of them. Um, but that can just be put on a wall or something. You get the fixing screws. We've got some black cable ties. Uh, and then the usual little Ubiquiti uh, document 
um, with bits and pieces in that as well. And that is about it. So it's pretty simple. There's not an awful lot in the box. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in and we'll get it set up. Okay, so we're just about to get into the setup, but I just wanna quickly explain what I've got here and also tell you about some of the limitations that I've found playing with this AI port already. Because I've had it for a couple of weeks, so I've sort of got an idea of how it's gonna perform. Um, there's a few things I haven't tried, which I'm gonna try again, etc. But one of the things that I've found is, because I'm using a Dream Machine Pro SE, is that when I had three Hikvision cameras, a Hikvision doorbell, a Tapo camera, an AI dome, and a G5 dome connected. When I tried to put in the AI port, it seemed to just be too much for the Dream Machine Pro SE. It, it, the processing power was too much for it, so I couldn't get it to work properly. So what I've done is I've basically forgotten all the cameras, I've removed them so they're ready for adoption, apart from the AI dome, that one is still running, but all the others are ready for adoption at the moment. And the reason I've done that is just because I want to give the Dream Machine Pro SE a chance to do this properly, and any issues we have, I don't want it to be related to processing power, I want it to be related to you know, a limitation on the AI port. So I think if I was doing this on anything over a sort of four or maybe five camera scale project, I would probably use a dedicated MVR for that. So that's one limitation that I've found already. And I will talk about that again uh, later in the video. Okay, so let's get on to the setup. Okay, so I'm on my Dream Machine Pro SE. I just want to show you quickly. I'm actually on early release at the moment. So I'm running Protect 5.1.87. I'm running early release because I'm hoping that this will give us the best opportunity to get everything working. I have tried this on uh, on the normal release and uh, we get the same results. So let's go to my cameras. So you can see all the cameras here. As I just explained, I don't wanna have the Dream Machine Pro SE hindered by having too many cameras adopted. So I've got all of these um, removed. The only one I've got at the moment is the AI dome. I've got another viewport here so I can view this, the cameras, the AI port, uh, and then we've got all these others that are ready to adopt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by adopting the Tapo camera, which is just a little cheap Wi-Fi camera. Um, I'm not expecting great things from this. I know exactly what will happen here, but we will run through it anyway. So if I go to click to adopt. Okay, so we've got that camera is now online, that Tapo camera. So now I'll click on the uh, port and I'm just gonna do a basic uh, connection to it first. So I'll click on here and then it will ask me uh, which camera I want to select. I've only got that Tapo available at the moment, and then I can click Save. So now the camera is going to try and connect. So we're connecting on my viewport at the moment. Uh, the Tapo is blank. It just says it's offline, um, but we are waiting to connect. Now I'll give this a couple of minutes, and then we'll see how it's going to get on. Okay, so we now see the Tapo is telling me it's online. For some reason, it's on an old camera. There we go. So the Tapo says it's connecting again. Now this is what I've found. That's actually the camera that I had the AI port on before. It's not updated onto the Tapo yet. But what I find is that this Tapo will just go between online and connecting, online and connecting, and will never actually work. It's very frustrating. I've left it on for a long time before and it just won't work. So we're getting a view of the, of the camera that the AI port was associated to previously, rather than the Tapo camera itself. Um, and it just isn't working. On my viewport, it just still says connecting. It's not actually doing that here, it just doesn't work. So if I go to the live feed on that, we're getting the wrong camera here. So that shouldn't even be working because that camera isn't currently adopted. The other way to adopt the camera at the AI port is to use the advanced adoption. So we can see that the Tapo is not working. It's just doing this online thing, but it isn't actually working. I'll just refresh the page to double check. Yeah, we go back to connecting and it will just keep rotating between this connecting and online and it displaying the wrong camera, the previous camera it was associated to. This will never connect because that camera is not even adopted. So it's a little bit frustrating. If I go to the AI port um, and then we'll say manage here and we go to advanced adoption, uh, we go to advanced adoption and we put on 192.168.200.40 Put my credentials. Now this is the most confusing part. Although these are definitely the, for the right credentials, it says invalid credentials. Please check and try again. But I just adopted the camera with these credentials and they worked absolutely fine. So for some reason in the advanced adoption stage, it doesn't recognize those credentials. I'm not sure why, but it means that I can't use the advanced adoption for this camera. 
so I have to just do it in the basic way but in the basic way it doesn't work that camera will never ever work it just doesn't doesn't load at all um, which is very very frustrating so the Tapo camera doesn't work I've got to be honest I didn't expect this camera to work because it is just a little cheap Wi-Fi camera and I can't connect the AI port to it directly so actually I'm not too bothered about this camera but it is still a little bit uh, frustrating that it doesn't work okay so the next one I'm going to do I'm just going to remove this camera because I don't want it uh, to be potentially using any processing power so let's remove that the next one I want to do is the doorbell. So the doorbell is here, if I adopt that. So I've now adopted the doorbell, and on my viewport, I can actually view this camera now. It's giving me that live feed. Um, what I find a little bit strange is that if I go on here, it still kind of loads here. I don't know why it does this. And then when you go to the live view, it's kind of really laggy. It doesn't connect straight away, um, despite the fact that it is running on the viewport. So it's it's odd if I check the protect app as well and also it is running on the protect app so it's odd it just doesn't seem to load or when you do it this way but I don't really know why that's that's just a bit odd um, but what I want to do next is I want to connect this AI port to the doorbell and see if we can get it to get those AI features. Now the doorbell has actually got a really good view of people approaching the door, so it's ideally placed for facial recognition. It's only a two megapixel camera, but at that range, that really doesn't matter. It really does capture people as they're coming into the door. So let's click to pair. We're gonna select it, we're gonna say save, and then we'll see what it does. Okay, so the camera now says it's online, but if I select it, we've still got the old camera showing. And if I load it, it doesn't come through. Now, yep, it's just giving me this connecting status. If I look on my viewport, I can see that the camera is not loading. It's just giving me the spinning wheel. And if I go onto my Protect app, I've got the wrong camera again associated with this. It's got the old camera, which is very odd. I'm not sure why that is happening. It seems to be selecting the wrong camera, but even when I've done this previously and it's selected the right camera, it never seems to work. It doesn't go between, uh, it doesn't go onto the uh, doorbell properly. It just goes connecting and online, connecting online all the time and never quite settles. Now at the moment, I've got the AI port plugged into uh, the network. So it's going through the network to get here. So what I'm gonna try next is I'm gonna take that AI port and I'm gonna plug it directly in between network switch and the camera itself. I'm also just gonna put a PoE Plus injector on this um, because I wanna make sure that it's got enough power. So uh, we'll make sure that the doorbell is sufficiently powered and we're not getting any, any issues from that side. Okay, so I've connected the AI port directly to the camera now, so it's in between the camera and the switch. And I've also put a PoE Plus injector on there just to make sure we've got no issues with uh, the power side of things. Now, if I go to the Hit Connect app, I can see that the camera, uh, the doorbell is online. So that's all working from that side. Um, but if I go to this camera here, we can see yet again that we're getting the old camera feed, not the new doorbell. Uh, on my viewport, I'm not seeing that camera at all. Okay, so let's just try the advanced adoption. Um, so if I go to here, go to manage, advanced adoption. Okay, so we've done the advanced adoption and again, we've got this connecting status and if I just hover over that, I'm getting the wrong camera view again. Okay, so it now says it's online, but on my viewport, I can't view that camera and then the little preview screen here, we've got the wrong one. Now we've gone back to connecting and I can tell you that this is the cycle we're going to go through. It will just keep failing or displaying a previous camera which it was connected to. I don't know why it does this. It just doesn't seem to want to work. So it fails on the doorbell. Now I've tried this several times and I cannot get it to work either directly connected or through the network. Um, the doorbell works fine as a camera when you just have it on as OnVIF, but as soon as you add this AI port, it just doesn't work at all. So now we've got two cameras. We've tried the Tapo and we've tried the doorbell and neither of them have worked. They're just doing this online, offline, connecting, etc. So the viewport again is saying connecting at the moment. If I look at my app, it says connecting. 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the AI port off that camera, we're going to plug it into the network and we'll try one of these just standard Hikvision cameras. You can probably guess which one it's going to be because it's already on the preview of the AI port. So let's try that now. Okay, so I've adopted the uh, other camera. You can see it here, the Hikvision one. That's the one that we were getting the preview of before because I'd previously connected it. And um, we can see it's online if I go onto here. Sometimes it takes a little minute to connect. It's a little bit laggy, but on my viewport, it's uh, immediate and the picture is very clear. Also on my app, uh, the picture is very clear. I don't know why it does this. It seems to really struggle to get the uh, camera to come online when you view it uh, via the browser. That may be related to the fact that I'm using Safari, but I'm pretty happy that this camera is working because as I said on the viewport, it's very clear. So let's go, oh, didn't like that. So let's go to the AI port and we're just going to say click to pair, select that camera, press save. And then we'll see what it does. Okay, so that's come online almost immediately. So there we go, let's have a look at this. So if we go on to here, again it might be a little bit, actually it's come through, so it came through straight away on here. So the AI port has worked with that, it still seems to be doing something here. But what I'm gonna do is I'll go outside and I will uh, move this vehicle, see if it picks that up and see if it can read this number plate. And also I'll sort of make my face very clear as I walk up. Um, this is not the ideal camera for this. I didn't really want it on this camera because it's a little bit high, a little bit far out. This is actually a four megapixel camera, so the, the picture is actually very clear. If I, if I zoom it up there, you can see it is very clear. Um, but still it's a little bit high so you're not going to get many people looking up at this camera it might be good for the number plates but I've got an AI dome down here which is going to capture all of that anyway the doorbell is kind of here so that would have been even better for facial recognition etc so uh, we'll give it a try and see what happens so let's go out there now Okay, so we can see uh, the detections here. Some of these are actually older where I've had it on uh, the camera on previously we can see the detections so if we look at this it's got me nice and clearly there. It's captured my face and it's identified me as you. Um, it's also picked up this vehicle here and it's picked up uh, my wife's car as well. So it's got all of this stuff. Um, that's quite far out, but it still managed to pick it up and it reads the number plate as we come in. So um, that's that's pretty impressive. It's, it's worked pretty well there. Even though the camera isn't in the best position, it's still getting it. I have given the camera lots of opportunity here by looking directly at it, which most people wouldn't do, they'd be looking forward. So as I said, this is not the best position for it, but all the features are working on this camera. So I can tell you that the other cameras here, these other Hikvision cameras also work with this, but they are not well placed for the AI features. Um, so it works really well with this Hikvision one, just not in the right place. Um, it doesn't work with the tablet at all and it doesn't work with the uh, doorbell which was the most disappointing for me. I really wanted it to work with this doorbell. I also just feel uh, that there's quite a lot of processing power required for this. Previously when I had all these cameras connected I just couldn't get those events to display so as we look in those, um, in those detections here I was getting this previously but when I selected one, it wouldn't play the video. And I think that's just because it was completely overwhelmed with how much work it was having to do with all these additional cameras and the AI port and the processing power required for that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that we've got it working on this camera eventually, um, just a little bit disappointing on the others. Okay, so let's go to my final thoughts. Okay, so that was the AI port. Um, a sort of mediocre success on this. Um, it wasn't great. Um, obviously we couldn't get it to work on the Tapo, couldn't get it to work on the doorbell, which is the one I really wanted it to work on. Um, but we could get it to work on the Hikvision uh, normal cameras, the turret cameras and the bullet camera with no issue whatsoever. And all those features worked really nicely. So I suppose that is a positive. Um, would I recommend this product? I think probably I will recommend it in a few months time. But at the moment, it just doesn't seem ready. It doesn't seem like it's a kind of complete package. And I would feel a little bit kind of uh, worried that uh, my clients might have problems with this client, with this uh, device if we were to install it. And it would just cost us a bit of time and effort to try and keep resolving issues with the AI port. So at the moment, I would not install this product and I 
probably wouldn't recommend it. But I think it is something that you'll be to improve. I think we'll see improvements on this over the uh, over the coming months. Um, so I will check back in and see if we can get it to work exactly as I want it to on that doorbell. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you found the video useful. Please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye.